وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Every single day there is something that we all read a minimum of 17 times a minimum of 17 times as we all know Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said la salata liman lam yaqra bi fatihatil kitab there is no salah for the person who doesn't recite surah al-fatiha so we always repeat these seven ayat this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them as sab'ul mathani the seven often repeated verses but most of the time, even if you understand it, even if you've heard the tafsir, most of the time when we recite these ayat, we do it kind of like a program, right? Where it's such a habit that we become like robots and it's just coming off of our tongue and we're not even thinking about what we're saying. There's so many benefits in these seven ayat and so many lessons in these seven ayat 
This is why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam called this surah a'zamu, uh, a'zamu as surati fil Quran, the greatest surah in the Quran. And Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam called it uh, called it Ummul Quran, the mother of the Quran. This is something that the, the Arabs they used to say when they would say um of something, the mother of something, what it meant is a thing which that other thing goes back to. So when we say Ummul Quran, it means everything in the Quran goes back to Surah Al Fatiha. So these seven ayat contain the meaning of the entire Quran summarized in these seven ayat. So today, inshallah, in my khutbah, I'm going to briefly talk about the tafsir of Surah Al Fatiha. The reason I say briefly is because if the entire meaning of the Quran is contained in these seven ayat, a 20 minute talk will not do it justice. Right? If you look at books that some of the ulama have wrote, books of tafsir and other books, you'll see that these scholars will write for hundreds of pages just about Surah Al Fatiha. One uh, amazing example, and if anyone wants to go home and read and really strengthen their iman just from reading about this, read the beginning of the book Madariju Sariqeen by Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah, Rahimullah Ta'ala. So the, for about the first hundred pages of this book, it's just him talking about the so many benefits from this surah, Surah Al Fatiha. Madariju Sariqeen by Ibn al Qayyim. So the first ayah. All the scholars agree it's seven ayahs, but the scholars disagree as to whether Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is the first ayah or not. But regardless, we'll talk about it as if it is the first ayah. So Bismillah, in the name of Allah. This is how we always see it translated, right? This ba, this letter ba at the beginning means for it's for isti'ana. You are seeking the help of Allah by mentioning the name of Allah. You are seeking the help from Allah in whatever you're doing. So if you say Bismillah. And you're going to read, what you mean is Bismillah Aqra. In the name of Allah, I will read. If you're writing, Bismillah Aktub. In the name of Allah, I'm writing. In the beginning of your speech, Bismillah Atakallam. In the name of Allah, I am speaking. So this, first and foremost, this is what we do when we start the Quran, right? Bismillah. This Qira'ah that I am doing, I am doing it for the sake of Allah. And I am seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me strength in this Qira'ah. Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two of his most beautiful names, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Both of these names are from that linguistic meaning, Rahmah, the mercy of Allah. So both of these names uh, in point out to the all-encompassing mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the scholars, they talk about what is the difference between these two names. Ar-Rahman, they say this is Rahmatun Wasi'ah. And Ar-Rahim, this is Rahmatun Wasila. So Ar-Rahman refers to that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that encompasses all of the creation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my mercy encompasses and covers everything. Muslim, non-Muslim, human, jinn, animal, everything. Allah's mercy uh, encompasses those everything. But then for the believers, the people who follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders and stay away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prohibited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا That He is Rahim for the believers. A special mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will reach to us believers because of that belief and that iman that we have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day of judgment, every one of us has, is going to have fallen short, right? None of us are, can say that we spent our entire life doing every single thing right the way we were supposed to. But that iman that we have puts us under the special mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just special for these believers. So this is the mean of, meaning of Ar-Rahim. So Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, the all-encompassing mercy, and Ar-Rahim, that special mercy just for the believers. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next says, Alhamdulillah. So, to really understand this, this one simple word that we say all the time, right? Alhamdulillah. We just say it like this. We're not even thinking what it means. We're just Alhamdulillah. 
This one simple word has such deep meaning in it that we have to break it down piece by piece. So first, what does hamd mean? Sometimes we translate it as, as praise. In Arabic, there's a word thana. Thana means praise, right? You mention someone or something's good qualities and everything about it. This is thana. You are praising that, uh, that person or that individual. And then there is a word shukr. Shukr, somebody does something for you and you thank them. Right? So hamd is something that encompasses all of this. Hamd means praising for the perfect attributes and thanking for all of the favors. So when we say that the hamd is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're saying that all the praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect attributes. The thana, that praise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses all the perfect attributes and the shukr because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many bounties that we po couldn't possibly count it. Now this alif lam in front of it, alhamd, al. When people first start, it, who are non-Arab, when they start learning Arabic, they usually learn alif lam, al means the, and they translate it as the, the hamd. But there's several other meanings of al, which can be understood from the context. And one is what is called istighraq. It means whatever that word that you are saying, that alif lam means every single thing from that category. So alhamd means every single type of hamd. And what is hamd? Praising for the perfect attributes and thanking for all the blessings. So when we say alhamd, we are saying every single praise because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all of the perfect attributes. There is no perfection, there is no attribute of perfection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't possess. And every single ni'mah, every single ni'mah that comes to us is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamd means every single thana, every single shukr, every praise, every thanks, all praise and all thanks. Li Allah. What does li mean? Again, li, when person, a person is learning Arabic, they'll say to, to, or belongs to. But this li right here, it means al-istihqaq and al-ikhtisas. That Allah is most deserving of this. First, Allah deserves every single praise and thanks. And al-ikhtisas, that, that alhamd only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you can praise somebody for something they've done or something, but their praise is limited to just that specific thing that you're praising them for. But Alhamd, every type of praise and thanks only is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can say Alhamd, every type of praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Alhamdulillah, Rabb al alamin What is Rabb? Again, another one of those words that we just simply say, Lord. The Rabb is the Khaliq, the Creator, the only Creator. The one who brought something out of nothing. This is the Khaliq. The Raziq. Your only provider. Yes, somebody else signs your paychecks. Yes, kids, maybe the parents give them an allowance or whatever it may be. But that creation which is giving you money is just a sabab. It's just the means. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider. The provision only comes from Allah. So this is the Lord, the Khaliq. The creator, the raziq, the provider. Al-malik, the owner. The only one who owns anything with real ownership is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you possess, whatever is in your hands, it's only there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to you for the time being. And al-mudabbir, the planner. That every plan we make, it will only be carried out if it is within the plan and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning of the word rabb. So just simply saying Lord loses so much of that meaning. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only creator, the only provider, the only planner and the only owner. And he is the Rabb of Al-Alameen. What is Al-Alameen? Again, another one of the things, what do we translate it? The universe, the heavens and the earth. The Al-Alameen is everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is Al-Khaliq and the entire Khalq, the entire Makhluq is al alamin This word al alamin comes from al alam, which means a sign for something. Right? 
you would say this is a alam, this is a sign of something else. This is evidence of something else. And it's best summed up by what uh, famous, uh, famous line of poetry. فَيَا عَجَبًا كَيْفَ يُعْصَى الْإِلَاهُ أَمْ كَيْفَ يَجْحَدُهُ الْجَاحِدُ وَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ آيَةٌ تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ وَاحِدُ This poetry says how amazing or strange it is that the one true deity can be disobeyed. Or how is it that someone can deny his existence when every single thing, meaning everything in existence, is evidence and a sign proving his existence. So every single thing that exists is evidence of the Creator. The creation is evidence of the Creator. So based on that, how can anyone deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is why Al-Alameen Mean is, is called Al-Alamin because it is an alam, it's alamat of the existence of the Creator. So, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise, all thanks is due only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator, the Sustainer, the Provider, the Owner of everything that exists, which is evidence of His, uh, His existence and His Majesty. Then again, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Then again, we mention these two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pointing out the infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that special mercy that is due just for the people who believe in Him and follow His orders and stay away from His prohibitions. And then Maliki Yawmiddin. And some of the qira'at, and these are both authentic ways of reciting from the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught his companions. Maliki Yawmiddin and Maliki Yawmiddin. Malik means the owner and Malik means the king. So we talked before, I mentioned how Allah is the Malik, the owner of everything. Yes, we own some stuff, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of everything. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king, the Malik. So a person could say, well, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in this ayah that He is the owner of the Day of Judgment? And he's the king of the day of judgment. When it's a fact and it's known that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of everything at all times and all days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king of all times and all days. It's not specific to the day of judgment. The answer is because there are kings today and there are owners today. Even though yes, their kingship and their ownership is all just from the permission of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take it away in an instant. But on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, وَيَقْبِضُ اللَّهُ الْأَرْضِ وَيَطْوِ السَّمَاوَاتِ بِيَمِينِهِ وَيَقُولُ أَيْنَ مُلُوكِ الْأَرْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, he will, uh, he will take the earth and the heavens and fold them up in his hand and say, Where are the kings of the earth today? Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Liman al mulk al yawm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Where are the kings? Who is the, the who does the kingship belong to today? Lillahi al wahid al qahar. Whatever power you think you have, whatever ownership you have, whatever authority you have today, will not mean anything on that day. Everybody will be subject to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands. Anyone who speaks will only speak what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them to. Your authority, your ownership, your whatever you have will not benefit you on that day. The only thing that will benefit you on that day is your good deeds. As Ali ibn Abi Talib said, Al-Yawm Amalun Wala Hisab Wal Ghad Hisabun Wala Amal. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu he said, Today is action and you don't see the consequences. And then tomorrow, meaning that day, Yawm Al Qiyamah, it will be all consequences and no more action. So now is the time not for us to increase our authority, not for us to increase our possessions, but for us to increase our a'mal and our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what will benefit, benefit us on that day when there is no owner and no king except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maliki yawmiddin. Also look at the, the order of these ayat. 
This ayah, Maliki Yawm al-Din, or Maliki Yawm al-Din, this puts a little bit of fear into the heart of a believer, right? If we have Iman, if our heart is healthy, when we hear this ayah, it creates some, some type of fear and some type of, uh, you know, some awareness in the heart of the believer. But what is the ayah we recited right before that? Ar-Rahman rahim That ayah mentioning the infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So we, right after we mention this one ayah which gives us so much hope and gives us so much comfort and ease, we mention the next ayah which puts that fear in the heart of the believer. And this is how the believer should be. Not leaning too far to either one of these sides. Between the hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and between the fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you go too far to either one of these sides, you'll be ruined. Right? Some people, they constantly are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say, it's okay, Allah is al ghafur rahim Allah is the most forgiving, most merciful. It doesn't matter if I'm disobeying Him. It doesn't matter that what I'm doing because Allah is al ghafur al rahim And then you have another person who said, oh, I've committed these sins, that's it, I'm destroyed, there's no chance for me, I can't make tawbah, there's no way I could ever go to Jannah. Both of these attitudes are completely incorrect. The believer should be in between these two. Knowing that Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, He has that infinite mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your tawbah. No matter what it is that you did, you can return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can make tawbah. You can turn your life around and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your tawbah. But likewise, we also know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't prohibit us things for no reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't tell us to stay away from things just for nothing. So we avoid what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from and we know that it has effects on us. But at the same time we also have that hope in the infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and I will stop the tafsir here today and next week inshaAllah we will uh, finish the, the surah أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهَا لِي وَلِكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Everybody on the way in received this piece of paper. Please don't just put it in your pocket and go home and throw it in the trash. This is very important because uh, we live in this area. This is our masjid. We come here for Jum'ah. Maybe we come here more than that. And we pass by and the environment is important for us. When we're coming to the masjid, we want to have that. We, we come, we want our spirits to be lifted. We want to strengthen our iman and our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while coming here. So it's very important that we are in an Islamic environment. From the time we drive to the masjid and pull in the parking lot until the time we leave, we want to be in that Islamic environment. Right? So currently there's this utility box outside and this is a thing the city of Seattle is doing where they're letting the neighborhood and the community vote on what gets painted on that utility box. And alhamdulillah, they made us aware of that. And one of the sisters from here in the community has submitted some Islamic art to be painted on that utility box. So we all have the ability and option to vote for that using this QR code or this, uh, this address, this, this web address. You can go and vote. It has all the information on here, who the artist is, which number to pick, and everything like that. So go and vote. That way we have something outside the masjid that also increases our iman and gives, puts us in that uh, good Islamic environment and it supports uh, our sister in Islam who submitted the design. So please remember that. Don't just throw it away. Don't forget. This is very important and it's very easy. It won't take long, inshallah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله 
إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا الصلاة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي السحف الأولى سحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Allahu Akbar السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 